35 life tips that will instantly improve your life over 50. The first tip is how to use the magnifying feature on your iPhone. It makes a huge difference in your life, particularly if you're over 50 and your eyes don't work as well as everybody else's. And Luke set it up for me and he's gonna help you set it up yourself. Hey ladies, so there are actually two ways that you can use your iPhone as a magnifier. One to magnify what is actually on the screen and one to magnify what is in front of the camera. Just for convenience sake, what I'm gonna do is put next to us somewhere a screen recording of what I'm doing so you can follow along. First thing you want to do is go to your settings app and then scroll down to accessibility. Now accessibility is, it looks like a little man with his arms out on a blue background. Uh, so just open accessibility and then at the top uh, where it says zoom, just toggle that on. Now once it's toggled on, it should immediately zoom in. Now to unzoom it, just tap the screen twice with three fingers. So it'll zoom in and zoom out. Now to make sure you've always got control of this, uh, what you want to do is scroll down to Zoom Controller, click that, and then toggle the Zoom Controller on. At the bottom right hand corner of your phone, a little directional pad should show up. You can move that around you can, so you can place it wherever is comfortable for you. Now this will control all of the Zoom features. So just tap that once, and then you should get a little screen. Zoom in, choose region, choose filter and hide controller. So zoom in, if you click zoom in, it'll zoom in automatically for you. Uh, and like I said before, you can do this as well by tapping the screen twice with three fingers. So click that again and choose region is a really interesting feature. Um, so when you choose region, you can either choose full screen zoom or window zoom. Now window zoom will allow you to zoom in just on a particular region. Um, and you can control this by moving the slider just around like this. And again, to get out of it, just tap outside of the window with three fingers. There we go. Now that is magnifier number one. Now for magnifier number two, we wanna go back to settings, back to accessibility, and click on the little magnifier button. Now again, toggle magnifier on. If you've got an iPhone 10 and above, all you have to do is triple click the side button and it will instantly zoom in. So what you can see, I don't know if you can see behind us. Uh, well, how's this? Yeah, so it zooms in on whatever the camera is facing. If you've got ingredients on the back of packaging or if you're reading a menu uh, that you can't quite make out the the words of. <laughs> this is an excellent feature that helps you just read it a little bit easier. My next tip is going to change your life. These are reading glasses and you carry them with you everywhere and look how thin they are. So all you do is you put them on like this and all of a sudden you can see everything <laughs> and you can carry it I stick it onto the back of my phone. This is a really ugly phone cover and I'm just waiting to get a new one. But have a look at this, super easy. They are life changing because if you've got your phone and your glasses together, you never, ever, ever cannot read something. <laughs> so give these a try. And another pair of reading glasses that makes such a difference is these tiny ones here. They come in a case and they go in your handbag or your purse at night, or if you're going shopping and you've only got a small bag, they don't take up any room. And they're so easy, they're inexpensive, and these or these are fantastic if you forget your real reading glasses. My next tip is to take a photo of where you park so you don't forget. And if you're like me, Probably 80 to 90% of the time you forget where you've parked in a parking lot. So grab your camera, take a photo of the number on the parking lot or what's close by or the street. And when you come to find your car, magically you're going to know where it is. I think you're going to love this next tip. Go to the year that you turned 18. For me, that was 1984. And you type in the top 100 songs playlist 
for the year you turned 18. And you can do this on Spotify, YouTube Music or Apple Music. And the reason this is so great for women over 50 is because when we were 18, that was the year for most of us that we were going out into something new. We'd finished school, we were either going on to something new, we may be moving out of home, all of our life was in front of us and we hadn't yet explored much at all. And when you start listening to all the songs that were playing in that year, the year that you turned 18, you get triggered so much. I've been doing this lately and it really takes you back to that time and you think about what were my dreams back then? What did I want? Who was I friends with? All of these things, they just come bubbling up. And if you're in a time of transition now that you're over 50, which so many of us are, listening to the music from then really helps stir something up inside of us and it gives a little bit of clarity about where you've been and where you want to go. So try this, it's so much fun and it really does some good to the soul. Did you know that it's considered rude now to call your family and friends on the phone? I know that's a shocker, but that's how it is today with the younger generation, particularly the millennials. They don't seem to have time to talk to us anymore. So my tip is to get your phone and record a video message Say what you want to say, say hello, how are you doing, tell them what you're doing, have a video message and then send it to them. And when they have the time to get back to you, they can reply by video message or give you a call. But there's no point in getting upset that people don't have the time to talk to us during the day anymore. Just do this and then get on with your life. This is a fun tip. Go through your wardrobe and find an outfit that you haven't worn in a long time. Put it on and take a selfie of yourself and then send that photo to a friend and ask your friend what's one thing that you think I could do to tweak this outfit to make it look better. And two things are going to happen. Your friend's going to be happy to give you a suggestion and not feel bad about hurting your feelings because you've asked the question. And you are going to find a new way to wear an outfit that you haven't been wearing. And we leave outfits in the wardrobe, sitting there collecting dust because we don't think they look great on us. And this way, you're getting someone else's opinion in an honest way and you will be surprised at how amazing their advice is. When you wake up in the morning, particularly if you're not going to work, don't put your dressing gown on or your daggy clothes on. Instead, put your workout gear on. And that's going to tell your mind that you're going to do some exercise. And it takes you out of the mindset of mope around the house and it puts you into the mindset that I have my workout clothes on and my workout shoes and I'm going to do something. Even if it's only five minutes, you're going to be moving your body. And if you do that, you're going to have a better day, I guarantee you. And you're going to be proud of yourself because you're doing something extra. So do this every day if you can. And if you go to work very early in the morning, do it in reverse. So when you get home from work, don't put your daggy clothes on, put your workout clothes on. Even if you're not going to exercise, just get into the mindset that you work out and you stretch or you do something every day. This next tip is great for everybody, but particularly for women over 50, and that's to do the Asian squat. And if you can't do it, to practice it. It's something that we could do and should do every single day for the rest of our lives. And the reason is as you're getting older, we need to keep our hips flexible and open. And the reason it's so important for us ladies who are over 50 is because this area in the groin area is where we hold all of our past hurts. And we've got to release that because while we're hanging on to it, we're staying stuck. So this exercise is so good and it's so very healing. I'll leave a link below in the description of a video I've done on that. And it's just so good every single day for the rest of your life. Speaking of past hurts, which we all have, and a lot of it comes up around this age, is to buy a book by Louise Hay called You Can Heal Your Life. This book, I have been using this for 20 years and it's all falling apart and I've stuck it together. And what it is, is a book about the thoughts that we have creating the illnesses within our body. And when you read the book and go through each of the ailments, you'll find that you can't argue with any of these descriptions because I've looked through all of them for my kids, for myself, for my family, for my friends, 
and it's always right. And Louise Hay says that if we can heal our mental pain and our anguish and our thoughts, we can heal our bodies. It's so, so helpful. Have a look through everything that is going on with you at the moment. And then this is the thoughts that created it. And this is the remedy. So, 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 so helpful. One thing I did that made a huge difference to my skin was change to an oil cleanser. And the oil cleanser stopped my skin from feeling so dry. It kind of happened like magic. I was always using a foaming cleanser and my skin felt squeaky clean, but it was always dry. The moment I swapped to an oil cleanser, that all went away. I use Shu Umara and I love this. This is the Pokemon edition, but you can use coconut oil or an inexpensive oil just massage it into your face and it takes off your mascara very very gently and you just wash it off with a face cloth i think you're going to love it and if you've got dry skin it really does make a huge difference my next tip for women over 50 is to start parting your hair on the side if you feel like you've got thinning hair and thinning hair for our age group can be a huge problem and the reason we part on the side is because female baldness and thinning starts at the center. And if you part your hair in the middle, it's a lot more obvious. And there does tend to be more hair to the side than there is in the center. So when you start parting on the side, you don't see as much scalp as you would if you parted in the middle. My best tip ever to get rid of the wrinkles on your forehead is to wear a fringe like I do. It saves a whole lot of money in getting Botox for these forehead wrinkles. Plus, it's very softening on your face. If you get it wrong, it's six to 12 weeks to grow it out and you're back to normal again. But it's worth giving a try just to try something new and to see if it softens your face a little bit. And my, and my next tip if you're over 50 is to add some soft layers around your face because it gives you texture and dimension. And that's what we need on our faces as we're getting older. There's two things to remember when you're getting a fringe or getting layering on your face. The first one is if you've got an asymmetric face like me, which means my face is sort of angular and uneven. And an asymmetric face can look enhanced with asymmetric lines. So this is a line going across my face and you know these layers I've got are all uneven. So the unevenness of my hair and my cut matches the unevenness of my face. The second thing is if you've got an angular face or a perfectly shaped round face or a square face, you don't need all this trickery that I use. You don't need that at all. You can go with a blunt fringe and straight sides or a straight part down the middle or on the side and your hair will fit beautifully around your face. So I think if you've got an asymmetric face, trick it up like I do. If your face is more angular and in dimension, you can easily have a cut that is straight on you that's or a blow dry that's straight or your hair fully pulled back that looks beautiful on your face not so much for people like me with an asymmetric face if you'd like to create a swept to the side look like I've got today there's a trick to it and most people will find that they have a cowlick somewhere along their hairline and when you have a cowlick it makes your hair go crazy so this is what you do you take your hair and you blow dry it the opposite way to where you want it to sit. So this morning I blow dried my hair that way. Pull the brush in and put the air on it and I let it sit. And then when it's almost dry, you pull it this way and then you let it sit. Then you spray it and it stays like that. A daily thing that I think we should all do is wear an SPF to protect us from UVB rays and UVA rays. B is for burning. Burning is the part of damage that you can physically see on your face or your body. And A, UVA rays, the A is for aging. So that's the invisible effect of sun on your skin where it ages from underneath. It's invisible, you can't see it. And the other thing is blue light. So even if you're sitting inside all day on your computer screen, that blue light is doing damage. So wear a sunscreen underneath your makeup 
or just by itself every single day these are two that I love the Australian gold mineral sunscreen and the La Roche 50 plus so both of these I wear underneath my foundation but as long as you're wearing something to protect you from all of that damage if you're a woman over 50 using a retin-a cream is going to really help your skin look great this is a 0.05 retin-a cream and I put this on every night so what it's doing is it's taking off all the dead layers of skin and you peel and they all come off and it's quite harsh so I've made a video on how to start using this and how to use it correctly and I'll leave a link below in the description and then my next tip if you are using the retin-a cream and get started and you don't want to peel use it with a barrier cream or a moisturizer that's going to mix in with your retin-a and take away the potency of the application so if you use retin-a by itself it's going to work quicker but your face is going to feel uncomfortable and irritated until it gets used to it this is a sorbeline moisturizer and this is just a rich moisturizing cream I'll leave a link for these below and the way that I do it is I put my retin-a on just a small amount pat it all in and then I put a layer of barrier cream moisture over the top and then I go to bed and if you do it this way you'll find that you don't have all of that irritation and it's a much more gentle process one solution for all of the problems we have in our age group with sleep is to stop using any devices at all 30 minutes before you go to bed every hour that you spend on your device suppresses your melatonin by 30 minutes and if that happens you don't go into your proper sleep cycles so if you can commit to 30 minutes before you go to bed deciding to read or journal or just think think without a device because that would be something different and you're going to find that it makes a big big difference because it helps you get to sleep quicker and that seems to be a problem for so many of us and my next tip is to go to bed at 10 p.m. and the science will say now that that is the most optimal time for us to go to bed and fall asleep so that we get the most human growth hormone production while we're sleeping if we miss that window of hgh production it affects us a lot because once it's gone it's gone so between 10 and 12 is the best time and then it goes on till 2 but that's the most bang for buck so we need to be asleep at that time to get all those benefits so bed at 10 and stop devices at 9 30 and see how you go any time you spend at all on your computer screen is a really great idea to use a blue light blocker and these little clip-ons go onto my normal glasses my reading glasses and they block the blue light from going into my eyes it's made a huge difference and it's stopped my eye strain and headaches from working on the computer if you've got stains on your teeth try coconut oil pulling this is amazing so you put coconut oil in your mouth and you swish it around for 15 to 20 minutes it makes a huge difference but that's the cosmetic reason I use it to keep my teeth white but the more important reason is that we collect a lot of bacteria and the beginning of disease in our mouth and when you do coconut oil pulling it pulls all of that out of your mouth and you spit it out and it's out of your body I've done a video on coconut oil pulling I'll leave that in the link below give it a try it takes the stains off your teeth whitens them up and it is perfect health for your gums your teeth and your whole body if you're over 50 start doing crossbody movements and exercises every day because it keeps our brain very very sharp so what that could be is using your left hand your non-dominant hand to use the mouse of your computer or to brush your teeth or to write something down anything that is going to make you challenged and think about it because when we do things with our right hand we're not thinking and we need to use our brains as we're getting older so we keep them alive and keep them active and that also goes with exercise and you can just simply touch your left arm to your right leg and your right arm to your left leg and just do things that are crossing over that left right brain barrier it really works 
and it really helps keep you sharp and you're going to find if you do this and practice it you're going to be great. If you're a woman over 50 I really want you to start doing this next tip. One night a week or two or three or four or five or six or seven but one night don't cook. Go on strike, no cooking coming from this girl and tell the whole family, tell your partner, tell everybody who cares to listen that you're not doing cooking and cleaning and housework for everybody else. So start with one day and see how far you can get, but give yourself a day off or a night off and make it a rule so that everybody knows and do it and enjoy it and spend the time instead doing some form of self-care. Look after yourself, have a bath, go for a walk, do anything because you can have a lot more time, but make sure that you do do it and let me know in the comments below if you're going to commit to that. And while we're on self-care, give yourself a manicure and a pedicure once a week. So as we're getting older, our hands are nowhere near as nice as they used to be for most of us. So we have to do a little bit of work to make them look a little bit better. Go out and buy some nail polish and some nail polish remover and a top coat and just do it for yourself. And your job is just to look after yourself a little bit more than what you're already doing. Another tip to make your hands look a little bit better as you're getting older is to wear a statement ring. It kind of takes off all the attention from your old wrinkly hands <laughs> and it puts the attention on the ring. And wear it on your middle finger on your right hand if you like. And you don't have to spend a lot of money because there's some really great rings out there that are inexpensive. And you just need to buy one or two and those rings will go with everything and you're set. I've got an eyeliner trick that's so great for mature eyes. It's lifting the eyeliner with a triangle shape and it gives you an instant eye lift. I'll leave a link for that video. It's so simple to do and it makes a huge difference. So make sure that you give that a try. And a tip for perfect foundation over the age of 50 is to buff the foundation in where your fine lines and wrinkles sit. So you grab a buff brush after your foundation has been applied, then you buff circles around the areas where you've got wrinkles. And what that's going to do is it's going to take away the foundation that's sitting inside your wrinkles. And that's when you get all those lines increasing. So when you do this, it really helps a lot to make your foundation look a lot more flawless. This one here is the Sigma Flat Kabuki. And this is a really great brush. It's kind of airbrushing all of your wrinkles because you don't want your foundation to sit there on top of your wrinkles then you can see it. Buff it out instead. Create a community of OQP and that stands for only quality people. Make sure that the people that are in your circle are quality people who feel good when you feel good and who are there when you're down. Quality people are people that are not constantly complaining about everything and they're not upset when you do well. So make sure that you assess the people around you and the ones that are making you feel really bad about yourself. Maybe you could gently stop seeing them as much and eventually let that friendship go. And that also goes with things that you watch on TV and on the internet and the news. If something's making you feel bad or someone's making you feel bad, ask yourself, are they quality people or is that quality content? Is that going in making me feel good or is it going in and making me feel bad? And then make the decision, OQP. If you can choose to live from your imagination rather than your history, you're going to have a better life for sure. And what that means is to stop thinking about constant, constant thoughts about what's happened in the past and instead start creating visions and dream boards about what you'd like to happen in the future and create the story of the life that you'd like to live and visit there often. What happens in reverse is we've got the story, we've already got it, of what's happened and we're always there. We're thinking about it, ruminating on it over and over and over again and we get stuck there and the universe brings us more of what we're thinking about and feeling about all the time. So if life isn't feeling good for you at the moment, have a look at that. What are you thinking about over and over again 
and think about what could I think about instead to make me feel better and to give me something nicer to get excited about. I'm in love with my makeup mirror that I travel with and you can use this at home too. This is great if you have trouble seeing 2020 vision and you need to put your makeup on. You can see everything in this mirror a little bit too close but remember when you're out there in the real world people don't see you in 10x. But if you're having trouble applying your makeup or if you wear glasses these are amazing. You can look right in, see everything. You get very, very scared, but then you take it away and it's all better. Whew, that was a lot of tips. That was 35 tips of things that you can do that will hopefully make your life a little bit easier or a little bit better. And if you've got some tips that you'd like to share with me, please leave it in the comments below. I would love to hear them. And maybe I can do another video with your tips, sharing it with everybody. Please give a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and share it with your friends. Thank you so much for watching and have a beautiful day.